Why was Silicon Valley trapped in binary for 80 years? Why did the Soviets fail? How did Huawei break the deadlock? In the high-stakes battle for dominance in the semiconductor industry, Huawei just dropped a bombshell that has shattered the global calm. Who would have thought that this Chinese tech giant would turn its attention to a failed technology, the ternary computing system, that the Soviet Union abandoned 70 years ago due to technical bottlenecks? This stands in stark contrast to Western tech giants, who have spent 80 years and invested massive resources in binary chips, believing they had a firm grip on the technological throne. Now Huawei's reverse move has caught them completely off guard. Even more shocking, real-world data shows that a Huawei-built chip based on ternary technology has a computing efficiency 1.58 times higher than today's mainstream binary chips. The news sent the global chip market into a frenzy, with tech stocks on Wall Street immediately falling and the Silicon Valley titans who once scoffed at China's chip development falling silent. This storyline, which feels like it's pulled from a sci-fi novel, is playing out in reality at an astonishing speed. What hidden technological breakthroughs and strategic layouts are behind it? The principle is actually simple. A binary, bit, is like a regular on-off switch, one or zero. A ternary, trit, is like a three-position switch, off, zero, low power on, minus one, or full power on, one. When transmitting information, a three-position switch can handle more work at once. According to information theory, one trit is equivalent to 1.58 bits, making it a clear winner in efficiency. Even more astounding is that this technology isn't a new concept created out of thin air by Huawei. We can trace its history back to 1958, when Soviet computing pioneers successfully developed the ternary computer, Seton. In the dawn of computing, when transistors were just emerging, Seton demonstrated a technological advantage far ahead of its time with its unique three-value logic architecture. Its stability was 30% higher than contemporary American computers, its power consumption was 40% lower, and it could even retain its operating state after a power outage, as if it had a built-in memory. However, constrained by the geopolitical struggle of the Cold War and the powerful promotion of the binary computer system, this genius invention a product of Soviet mathematicians' wisdom, was eventually left to collect dust in a lab, fading into history. Now, let's get to the bottom of this. Why did the Soviets fail back then? How did Huawei break the deadlock? And why was Silicon Valley trapped in binary for 80 years? All the answers will completely change your perspective. 1. The Soviets' premature deadlock versus America's path dependency. In 1958, Moscow State University created the world's first ternary computer, Seton. It used positive, negative, and zero voltages to represent three states, simplifying the handling of negative numbers and making programming so simple that even non-experts could use it. At the time, it completely outclassed contemporary American binary computers. But this miracle machine was scrapped after just a few years. First, the hardware was terrible. The circuits of the time couldn't reliably distinguish the half on state, and a slight temperature change would cause it to malfunction. Second, the ecosystem was isolated. The whole world was adopting binary, so the software was completely incompatible. Third, Soviet bureaucracy decided it didn't fit their plans and pulled the plug. In the same period, America's IBM placed a big bet on binary. With the simple hardware of on or off, Circuits, they rapidly deployed vacuum tube computers and, together with Intel, developed the x86 architecture, solidifying binary as the global standard. By 2024, Silicon Valley has invested over $2 trillion in binary R&D, with Intel's R&D spending alone reaching $20 billion annually. Yet Moore's law is on the verge of collapse. After 3 nanometer processing, shrinking chips further causes electrical leakage creating a vicious cycle of the smaller the chip, the more power it consumes. Looking back at history, the Soviet Union's exploration in computing was a tragic technical expedition. In the mid-20th century, Soviet mathematicians had the foresight to propose the theory of ternary computers. Its logic system, based on minus one zero one, was theoretically a better fit for human thought, 
and its computing efficiency and fault tolerance were superior. However, due to the international blockade during the Cold War, the Soviets couldn't acquire the core technologies to manufacture high-precision electronic components. The lack of precision transistors and integrated circuits kept ternary computing in the lab. Moreover, without global collaboration, even a prototype couldn't form a virtuous cycle of hardware and software development. Ultimately, it faded away under the double whammy of hardware limitations and an isolated ecosystem. In contrast, America's choice of the binary system, while theoretically less elegant, was a perfect match for the mature vacuum tube and transistor technologies of the time due to its simple. Base 2. Logic. This allowed for rapid commercialization of computers at a lower R&D cost. From the IBM 360 series to the popularization of personal computers, Binary built an unbreakable technical wall, creating a vast ecosystem network of hardware manufacturers, software developers, and users worldwide. The flip side of this is that the over-reliance on binary led the entire industry into path dependency. Changing the underlying logic would mean overturning decades of accumulated technical architecture and the entire ecosystem, making it a forbidden zone. Huawei's breakthrough is a meticulously planned move to break this deadlock. Amid external technological sanctions, Huawei astutely identified the industry's pain points, chip manufacturing was nearing its physical limits, and the performance growth of traditional binary architecture was slowing. It chose Ternary as the technical breakthrough point, simultaneously innovating the Kirin chip architecture and building the Harmony OS ecosystem. Through self-developed chip stacking technology and quantum algorithm optimization, Huawei effectively sidestepped the hardware implementation challenges that plagued traditional ternary computing. The distributed architecture and open-source strategy of the Harmony OS system rapidly brought together developers and users, breaking the closed loop of Western technological monopoly. This comeback is essentially Huawei's precise timing. It caught the golden window for hardware upgrades and self-built ecosystems turning a theoretical advantage from the Soviet era into a real force that is changing the global tech competition landscape. 2. Huawei's Three Axes of Breakthrough and Silicon Valley's Collective Blindness Huawei was able to resurrect ternary computing thanks to three key strategies. The first is a hardware breakthrough. The Soviets relied on large voltage differences to distinguish the three states, which was highly unstable. Huawei now uses nanometer-scale differential circuits that can precisely control tiny voltages, making them extremely resistant to interference. By using 27 single-variable functions detailed in its patent, Huawei also slashed the number of transistors, significantly reducing power consumption. The second is ecosystem layout. The Soviets were isolated, but Huawei has the Harmony OS system and Ascend AI chips as a foundation with built-in ternary interfaces that allow for simultaneous hardware and software iteration. The third is a mathematical foundation. Huawei sees the theory that ternary is closest to the natural constant E, making it the most efficient for information, fundamentally outcompeting the underlying logic of binary. In contrast, Silicon Valley isn't blind to the need for a breakthrough. In 2010, Intel tried to create a multi-value logic chip and in 2018, IBM tested ternary circuits, but they all failed. Why? First, they were unwilling to abandon the vested interests of the binary ecosystem. Switching to ternary would mean rewriting global software, a loss of trillions of dollars. Second, hardware manufacturers were obsessed with smaller manufacturing processes, and no one was willing to go back and innovate the fundamental architecture. In 2024, 90% of the R&D investment of Silicon Valley's chip giants is still going into binary manufacturing, leaving no room for ternary. 3. The New Rules of Global Tech Competition From Monopoly to Coexistence The rise of ternary has already triggered a global chain reaction. Olsen National Institute of Science and Technology in Korea has created a ternary semiconductor, which Samsung is already testing for foundry services. European chip giant ST Microelectronics is also secretly applying for ternary patents, all trying to ride this wave. In contrast, the US is stuck in a self-inflicted bind, 
On one hand, it restricts the export of chip technology to China, while on the other, it can't make its own ternary breakthrough. New chips with ternary modules now account for 15% of all chips the U.S. imports from China. While Silicon Valley executives may publicly claim the technology is immature, they are secretly buying them for research. More critically, Ternary has broken the monopolistic rule that chip technology can only be improved through manufacturing process iterations. In the past, Silicon Valley controlled the game by mastering advanced manufacturing processes. Now, Huawei's old theory plus new hardware. Combo proves that technological innovation doesn't necessarily require throwing money at manufacturing. This is a good thing for global tech development. Smaller countries no longer have to compete on manufacturing processes. They can carve out a niche for themselves by focusing on fundamental theory. For example, a Finnish startup optimized a ternary algorithm to outperform NVIDIA's binary chips and AI inference, securing a major contract from the European Union. Doesn't all this data blow your mind? It turns out that the true weapon in tech competition isn't how much money you spend, but whether you can see the overlooked opportunities. Huawei's use of a failed Soviet technology to outdo Silicon Valley is a lesson for all innovators. What seems like a bottleneck might just be a signal to change lanes.